Hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we are in Silverdale, Washington, and we're going to be working on this RV back here. Um, the front landing jacks are not working, and um, so there's a kit that you can buy that's got the sprockets and everything. We could have gone that route to fix the one leg that's not working. What this customer opted to do is buy um, um, two new, uh, buy a system that's got two legs, so he'll be able to <clears throat> control them independently and uh, instead of just all together. So that's kind of exciting. So follow with me while I make this um, R&R where we're gonna be taking out the old seized non-working jacks. Uh, jack, one of the jacks is not working and we're gonna be installing the new independent jack system. So that's what we have on the menu for you today. So you see there what he had to do to get this off his truck was um, put a block of wood in this little jack here just to get it up enough so he can unconnect, uncouple his truck. Um, and then when in here, I don't know if you're able to see, but so here we have the sprocket kit um, to get to this, but we're going to be taking this whole lag out. Now what it's going to uh, entail, first of all, we're going to put, I'm going to put a bigger jack and we're going to support the weight of this corner here. And uh, we're going to do one at a time. That side over there is going to act as our anchor. Uh, so we're going to get this side done. We're going to jack this up a little bit with my, with my jacks and we'll take this leg out. And in order to get that leg out, some of these are easier than others, but, um, the lighting's not so great. Um, we're going to take this bolt off, and there's one down in there. But I'll get better lighting on there. We'll be moving the cylinder out of the way. And um, so that's what we got going on. Jacking it up, taking the leg out, putting the new leg in. And then we'll have to do some wiring, but we'll get to that later. Once we get this leg off, we'll go do that leg. So here we go. At this stage, we've used the power puller to, to lift up um, the corner. I've put a jack stand on it, so the whole weight of the RV is on this six ton jack stand and we've got the the other um, his jack out so this whole leg is free and available to be removed so we'll be working on that next. Now on these jack stands that have um, one switch controlling both legs at the same time uh, what we have here this is the motor for it and the, and the gearbox for the leg on this side is is that and then there's a drive shaft here they make them square so that you can grab that with a channel lock or, or uh, adjustable wrench and help turn that in a bind. This is a, a slip connection. And then down here, this should be like a grade three bolt. This would be the wink link in a chain. Um, whew, I'm out of breath. Uh, what we find a lot of times is this will break. This is designed to break and people will replace it with a grade five or, or a grade eight bolt and then inevitably what happens next is it, it'll strip the gears out on the inside. So keep in mind that this bolt right here is a point of failure. It's, it's the weak, it's the fuse, if you will. It's the, it's the part that's designed to break. So we like to see those at about a grade three. Uh, if it's broken, then the motor was delivering too much torque to the jack and you're stripping out those little um, um, 90 degree beveled gears inside. So what we'll do is we'll take this off, okay, slide this drive shaft out of this pin in here to free up this leg and then we'll remove this leg. Now that we've got the drive shaft removed, we'll take this carriage bolt off. Uh, there's a bolt here, we're at the top of the jack and then down there's another one down here. So it's these two. Now, once we get this, this leg off, you're going to see a, a uh, they kind of bend a, a piece in the metal and, and you'll see it. it it's going to be right up in this area and underneath it where it fits in this bracket and it doesn't allow it to move. So there is only one way that these legs will fit properly um, to get you all the right clearance. And we'll show you that when we get to that stage. So now that we've got the drive shaft loose, we're ready to remove these two carriage bolts and this leg should come right off. Okay, I wanted to show you to you at this point before we pull the whole leg out by, by pulling out the uh, carriage bolt, you'll see that it's just kind of nested in there. This um, support has a bit of a profile. There we go. The support has a bit of a profile to it. Um, and then in the back, let's see if they make me a liar. Okay, where I got my finger on it. Okay, there's that little piece right in there that my finger's touching. This bent piece, if you will. Uh, I'll show you more when I get the thing out. But anyway, it rests on the bottom of this part right there. Okay, so 
it does nest in there and if it's not right, it, it won't seat right. You won't have enough clearance for your carriage bowl. So we're gonna keep fighting this thing. Uh, it was rusted as you see in here. Here's a better view of that profile I was talking about. And um, so we've got it loose. I might squirt some uh, penetrating fluid in there to help with the rustiness of it all. And um, kind of pull this thing out of here. So it takes two hands to do that, but we almost got this one out. All right, we got it out of there. Uh, there's a the hole that it was in. And um, I couldn't go out the bottom, which is what I normally do because it was broken in the extended position. And I just didn't have enough clearance unless I wanted to dig a hole in the ground. So I took the foot off there and um, I had enough clearance to pull it out the top. And so these are these little offsets I was gonna, wanted to show you, I was trying to explain, but you could see where the weight of the RV kind of rests on these little ears is what I will call them. Okay, so there are two right here. So now we're gonna install the new jack. This customer decided to go with the Ultra Fab. Um, we put in quite a few of these and uh, it's a pretty good system. What you need to watch out for is with the new UltraFab, it's got a higher head clearance on them. I think the uh, Bulldogs also, um, they're just taller here than the other one. The other one, I can't think it ends about right here where that drive shaft comes in. So you have to allow for this extra clearance on top. Um, now, another thing on here, we have the ear here. They gave us an ear on this side, and then there's one on the back. So on three sides, they give us an ear, and that's kind of nice. We can orient this different ways. So here we, we have very minimal clearance on this side and this side, and they have this little bit of an overhang. So it's kind of nice that they allow us the three sides to uh, work with. So at this point, we're going to feed him back in. I think I'll go in from the top and um, put our carriage bolts back in and get everything aligned. I know we're going to have clearance above. I might need to scooch over this regulator over a little bit to clear this, but we'll find out here in just a few minutes uh, if we have to move that over or not. I'll share this with you. Uh, what I had to do, as you see here, was open that up a little bit to clear those ears to get through. They don't give me enough room to work with it outside of of that parameter so by spreading these if it just had an ear in the back like the other one did that wouldn't be a problem but since this one has ears on both sides and in the back i needed to spread this just to get the that down through it okay okay so now we have the ears below where i had to spread that they wouldn't have cleared it any uh, the other way the carriage bolts will will squeeze that back together again so i'm not worried but we do have some clearance issues here which I was kind of referencing earlier. So we're gonna to have to move this valve over a little bit to clear right in there, okay? And, uh, but up at the top, we've got plenty of room. I mean, we can put another one on top, so. Okay, it was easy enough to move that over, but here's another issue we have. Uh, you'll see there's some play here, okay? So I'm looking at the space, hold on. Okay, here's the ear and here's the bracket. So there's, what is that, about a, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, right in there. Okay, down. Okay, so in other words, this wants to be touching. Now, let me show you what I'm dealing with on the other end of that. So remember that space right there. Okay, so this jack leg wants to be raised up in order to abut to that. Now let's show you what's going on under here. Right there, I don't know if it's coming out clear, but as you see there, remember I needed to go up about an eighth of an inch or let's say a quarter of an inch. Um, I'm already, I need to go down that same distance, if not more. So what I'm gonna have to do is take this back out and cut a little bit of that ear off just to make this thing fit. You see my, see what I'm trying to say? Um, so the two manufacturers didn't agree with the dimensions on when they made their, their product. So I'm gonna make a mark. I'm gonna push this up, make a mark where I need to cut and I'll, I'll probably cut off of this ear here because I'm not going to be able to get a tool in there. Even if my Dremel won't be able to get into there. But once I get it back out and I have my mark, we'll be in a better position to decide which one's going to be cut. But And one of these things is not going to fit into the other, so we have to make our ears correctly fit the brackets that are welded on the frame. Okay, so that's the latest challenge with this job. Now, if I go from the top of that ear to the top of this ear... I've got about 19 and 1 8, okay, is about what I'm looking at. Um, what they had done on theirs, you, you can see here, 
the top two ears are the same, but the bottom ones are off kilter. So 19 and 1 8 is what I'm looking at um, on this. So I need to make 19 and 8 space in there. So from the top of that ear to the top of this ear. So let's go see what we need to cut out on, on the frame itself. Up top, I've got my 19 and an eighth and I've locked my tape measure. Let's look down here. Now, if I go underneath, so I, I need to cut that, where the bottom of this tape measure is, I need to cut that much of that plate out to make that ear fit. Now, what I've opted to do is to, it's harder to do it this way. It's harder to cut this out. I could easily, or it would have been easier for me to have cut that ear off on the leveling jack, but um, my concern is that this is a much, okay, great. This is a much thicker steel and there's a lot more to it versus the steel on those ears. So if they're supposed to support the weight of the trailer, I don't wanna do anything to fatigue or compromise the strength of that. And um, as thick as these brackets are, I think it can handle having an eighth cut off. So um, I'm gonna get suited up and protect the eyes and. Uh, probably the only tool I got with me that will fit in that spot is a Dremel with a metal cutting bit. So um, that's what I'll be doing is getting in there and cutting and making sparks fly. Looks like I might have to do this to the other side too. So no fun, no love for Darren. And um, so that's what's next. Okay, there, there we go. We've got, uh, we've got it cut out. I've measured... Um, I've measured from the top to here, and I've got my 19 and an eighth, so I went ahead and cut that out. So my hope is that the ears will, will clear these two sides, because they're I'm pretty close to the weld there, um, if I were to cut that out anymore. So hopefully that's going to be enough for them. Let's try. Okay, the operation was a success. See how it fits in there nicely? So that's good. Now these side ones here, um, hope I'm not making you dizzy, but... These I can go ahead and cut off um, because these ears aren't really doing much. It's mostly the one on the back that's doing the heavy lifting. So I might just kind of cut the cut. It'll be easier to cut this metal than than this metal. So I might just cut these off a little bit uh, so that this the clamp will, will squeeze down on it. So just sharing some of the things I'm having to overcome out here in the field to put these in. But you might have to do this too, so I don't mind sharing. Well, I'm happy to report that we got it all in. Um, we had to move that over um, this side fit nicely and we have the the offset on this side here's a zerk fitting for maintenance we're going to be connecting these wires here in a next step and then down here we've got everything squeezed back together i did have to cut a little bit off of these ears to get it to seat properly but um this one is done so now uh we're going to go to the other side and um put that one together well, you know what, before we do that, there is one step I need to do, and I need to ground this one. Um, what I mean by that is um, I'm gonna need these jacks and that power puller, so I need to extend that, put something here to land on, and then energize the jack so it'll actually take the weight off of these so I can take those to the other side, and then we'll do the same to that side. But now that we know we have to do some cutting, and I've already got all my tools for that, the other side should be a little bit quicker. To extend the jack, manually real quick i'm just taking my jump box and um touching the lead here if you need to change direction you would just change the polarity of this okay makes sense where we're at is we're on this one i've already got it jacked up and all the weights off this leg so i'm going to go ahead and do this one without recording it you saw me do the other side i'm going to be duplicating it on this side and i'll pick you back up when i start doing the wiring Okay, we got this one. We had to do the same cutting and slicing and dicing on it as we did its brother over there. And so where we're at now is we're doing the wiring part. So on this RV, the um, I've already started. I started without you, yay. Um, on this one, you've got the landing legs um, inside the compartment here. So we're gonna be putting the new switches. Here's the switches that uh, they provide here. One's going to be too short, one's going to be too long, so we're going to uh, cut the ones that are too short and add them to the ones that are too long. And um, I think I said that backwards. It's cold and I'm tired, so I might not be saying this correctly. But anyway, now we're my favorite part, the wiring part. So we're going to open up the loom and um, just kind of grab power on the batteries and um, wire into the switches. And um, so that's the next step. So 
hang with me a little longer, we'll be done. Okay, we've got the, um, the switches stubbed out. I'm not gonna attach them to the walls yet because I wanna make sure that up is retract and down is extend uh, on both. So once we get them energized, we'll, we'll bump it and verify if it needs to go that way or that way, okay? Um, in here, we've got it all in the loom. Uh, well, once we get the other side buttoned up, that'll close up nicely, going through the hole there. Over here, <clears throat> um, we've got one of the motors wired in, and we'll be adding all this into loom. And since this guy was really, sh really short, in other words, the switch is just on the other side of the bulkhead there to here, I had some extra wire, so um, the other one has to go all the way over there. So. You see here, I just use um, butt splices to take that extra length, which is more than enough to make it to the other side. So that's where we are right now. And um, that's what I was trying to explain earlier is, you know, adding to this. And uh, so now I'm gonna grab some loom, boom, button all this up and make all the connections. Okay, we're at the end of the journey. We've got our two switches here. Uh, you, you can hear the motor and that's doing that jack. And this one's gonna do this jack. All right, so go ahead, Dakota, go ahead and push down on the switch. So, and the RV is, by going down on the switch, the jack is going down, and this leg, and um, this leg here is also, has his own switch. I hope that makes sense. And so, all right, stop. We're good, we're good. Um, so here we have all the loom, and we've got it all up, up through the top, and, um, it all goes through there. Okay, folks, well, that finishes up the video. I hope that this helped you. If you are going to be doing some leveling jacks yourself, um, hopefully there's some tips and tricks that I offered you, especially on some of that cutting and slicing and dicing that we had to do. Don't be surprised if you have to do that yourself. Um, but uh, so if this video was helpful to you, give me a thumb up on it. That really helps. Subscribe to our channel. You'll get new videos coming out. Like it. Share it with your friends. And remember, happy campers say Myrby Works. So from Silverdale, Washington, this is Darren from Myrby Works signing off. Yeah.